What do you mean your mom just left you all alone? I woke up one day and she was gone. I haven't seen her in three weeks and there's no more food in the house. I, I don't know what to do. You guys need to find her and arrest her. Well, honey, we'll try all we can to find her, but first, we've got to get you into foster care. Foster what? I couldn't believe my ears. How could my mom do this to me? Well, it was probably my fault, but I'll let you be the judge. I'll explain everything that happened until we got to the point of my mom totally abandoning me. Don't go away now. I was an only child with two loving parents who showered me with affection. My favorite parent was dad because he gave me anything I wanted. Remember Veruca Salt's dad from Willy Wonka and the Chocolate Factory? He was sort of like that, except I didn't need to ask twice. So you can bet that my childhood was awesome. Daddy, I want a big dollhouse. We'll go buy it tomorrow, dear. I want a pony, too. Okay, we'll just have to buy a house with a bigger backyard, but we'll make it work. Yay, can I have a little pig, too? I want to keep him in my room. Little piggies are so cute. Sure, darling. My mom was usually silent, so I wasn't sure whether she approved, but most of the time it just seemed like she didn't care. Now, people who get everything they want can do one of two things, become generous or become absolutely horrible and selfish. Can you guess what I became? It started really early. I brought one of my new dolls to kindergarten and everyone was impressed. There was this girl in my class called Maybelle. She wore the same clothes almost every day and she wanted to hold my doll. Ew, no, you're dirty. I don't want you to touch my stuff. And why do you wear the same thing every day? Are you poor? Being poor is gross. I bet your dad doesn't buy you lots of nice things. I have a bedroom with lots of toys. Where do you sleep? I'm sure it's outside, on the street. Just then, my teacher walked in and she was super angry. She gave the class a lecture about treating others with kindness and then she took me to the principal's office. She called my parents and told them what happened. My mom nodded silently and looked a bit disappointed, and my dad promised that he'd deal with me. When we left the office, he looked at me and said, Why don't we go to the toy store? I'll buy you something nice for listening to that stupid principal go on and on about respect. John, she just did something really horrible. Aren't you going to reward her? Yes, but she already had her punishment listening to that guy. My mom rolled her eyes and didn't say anything else. That afternoon, my dad bought me 10 new Barbies. I dressed one of them like Mabel and kicked her under my bed. You can already guess that I became one of the worst teenagers, a totally mean girl who treated everyone like garbage. But somehow, mean girls end up being popular, so my high school life wasn't bad at all. I got my dad to buy me the most expensive, fashionable clothes so that everyone could be jealous. Even my stationery was gold-plated. So all the guys wanted to be with me because I guess I was just a status symbol. I dated a few and settled on my favorite because he'd buy me lots of presents whenever we went out. His name is Charles. Anyway, one Saturday after hanging out at his house, he dropped me home and I was about to invite him inside for a drink when I heard something strange inside. It sounded like my parents were arguing. I asked Charles to kindly get lost and I pressed my ear to the door to listen carefully. You're overreacting, Anna. I'm not. You've been doing this since she was a child and she's become a total monster. Do you hear the way she speaks to her friends? I feel like I failed as a parent. And you should too. That's ridiculous. You treat her better than you treat me. When was the last time you bought me anything? Um... See, you can't even remember. So, what's your point? You need to stop. If you can't, I think we should get a divorce. I will never stop being a great father to my baby girl. Well, you'll need to do it from a distance. We're getting a divorce and I'm going to file for custody. Maybe I've got a little bit of time left to make her into a good human being. Fine. Was this really happening? Are my parents really breaking up? Was it all because of me? I went inside quietly so they wouldn't know I was back, then went into my room to think. Did it really matter? If my parents broke up, I guess my dad could still send me money and I could have all the things I wanted, right? It's not like I valued a relationship with either of them. I just wanted my stuff. So within a few weeks, my dad had moved out and I was stuck with my boring mom. Before leaving, he gave me a few of his credit cards and told me to use them responsibly. For the first few months, everything was fine, but my mom began to suspect something because I continued to buy designer clothes like nothing was wrong. She barged into my room one night, angrily. Give them to me this instant. What? 
Chill, Mom. Chill nothing! I know your dad left credit cards. Give them to me. No. Do you want me to go live on TikTok breaking everything in this room? Give me the cards! What? Okay, fine. Here. I handed over the cards and she cut them into pieces with a pair of scissors. I could have cried. By the way, your dad has started a new family. He lives about two hours away and he's married to some dumb blonde lady. She's already pregnant. The nerve. She what? I was heartbroken because what if he decided to spend all his money on the new baby instead of me? At this point, life just became difficult. My mom didn't buy me stuff even when I asked nicely. I didn't even ask for much. One day I just wanted this new Louis Vuitton bag and she told me to get lost because I already had over 300 bags. That was true, but what was one more? So now Charles had to buy me everything I wanted and that wasn't too hard for him because his parents were rich. But when my mom saw me coming home with bags and bags of expensive stuff, she'd look a bit jealous. Where'd you get that from? What do you care? Obviously not from you. Are you stealing? Of course not! I got my boyfriend to buy them for me. At least someone cares about me. You're the worst mother on the planet, and I wish I could go stay with Dad and his new wife. I'm sure she's prettier and smarter than you are. She sighed and left the room, and I had no idea that that would be the last time I'd see her for a while because the next day when I woke up, she was gone. She didn't come back that night, or the next day, or the day after that. There was enough food in the house, so I didn't really care. And when I was tired of that, I asked Charles to take me to restaurants. But then, three whole weeks passed, and there was no sign of my mom at all. I think you should go to the police. Why, Charles? Have you met my mom? She's annoying. What if something happened to her? Who's going to take care of you? How are you going to go to college? My dad? Do you even know where he lives? How to find him? I decided to listen to Charles, and I went to the police. They tried to reach my dad, but there was no answer, and instead of trying to find my mom to put her in jail for the scumbag she was, they said they'd have to put me in foster care for a while. Can I just stay home alone? No, honey, you're a minor. I broke up with Charles that minute because it was his bad advice that got me into this mess. He went home looking sad while I waited in the police station until a weird-looking family came to take me away. The cops said I got lucky because normally they'd have to send abandoned kids like me to an institution and it could take a while to find a foster family. I don't know how they defined luck, because living with this family was awful. I had to share a room with two other foster kids, gross girls who had no taste or class. They had no designer clothes at all, so we had nothing to talk about. I cried myself to sleep almost every night, wondering why on earth my mom would just leave me. I tried and tried to call my dad too, but there was no answer. After about two weeks of this torture, I decided that I couldn't take it anymore. I snuck out in the middle of the night and decided to go look for my dad. I assumed he'd be in a particular town since my mom said he was about two hours away. I hopped onto a bus and after two hours, I got off and began my search. I literally had no idea what I was doing. I just showed his picture to random people on the street and asked them if they'd seen him. No one had. And just as I was thinking about going back to that awful foster home, the cab pulled over. Where would you like to go? I don't want a cab. Ew! I've never ridden in a cab. Wait, have you seen this man? I showed him the picture of my dad. Oh yeah, I gave him a ride a few days ago. Can you take me there? Hop in! I couldn't believe my luck. After driving about ten minutes, the cab stopped in front of a tiny house with a cute flower garden. Are you sure this is the place? My dad can't be living somewhere so small. Yes, dear, it is. Now, are you going to pay me or what? I paid him and walked to the door. I rang the doorbell and nearly lost my mind when I saw who opened the door. Mom? Oh my gosh, Serena, how did you find us? Us? Then I saw my dad appear behind her. Uh, this is awkward. What's going on? Well, the truth is, we were both really tired of you and we decided that we didn't want kids anymore. So we made up some excuse so we could move away and start over. Now that you've found us, I guess we'll have to do it the proper way. We'll put you up for adoption or maybe you can just go back to that nice foster family and leave us alone. What do you think? They went back inside, closed the door, and I stood there in shock. I knocked and knocked, but they pretended I didn't exist. I had no choice but to go straight back to my foster parents in that awful home that I hated so much. 
This has been a horrible adjustment, but I'm learning to live like a normal teenager now. I only have about two years left until I turn 18, and I have no idea what will happen to me then. Wish me luck, I guess. My mom and I stood there with our jaws dropped. There was my older sister Janine, wrapped up in my stepfather's arms. Their faces were stuck together. Ew! What the? How long has this been going on? My sister and stepdad jumped. Uh, honey, I thought you weren't getting back until tomorrow. Oh, yeah, well, we took an earlier flight. Janine, what's going on here? How could my own daughter do this to me? How long has this been going on? Uh... At this point, I ran up to my room because I hate drama. I had no idea this was just the beginning of the craziest part of my life. It kept getting more and more outrageous, but you'll have to stay tuned to find out how. My mom thought she'd hit the jackpot when she met my stepdad. I was about five years old when she split up with my real dad, and she was really sad at first, but when she met Roger at a party and they started dating, she became the happiest woman alive. Roger owned an investment firm and a few other businesses. He was filthy rich, and before we knew it, my mom, Janine, and I were living in his mansion. Janine was already 18, but she wasn't about that college life. She just wanted to live like a rich man's daughter for a while. So I grew up rich. Until that week after my 10th birthday. My mom and I had just returned from Disneyland to find Roger and Janine wrapped up in each other's arms. My mom divorced Roger almost immediately and she still doesn't talk to Janine. I think they live together now, but I'm not sure. My mom and I had to move to a little house in rural Alabama because that was all she owned. Mom, what is this place? It's home now. There's only one room. Where am I supposed to sleep? There's a couch and a bed. Pick one. This was awful. My whole world turned upside down. Imagine living like a princess and suddenly you're stuck in a tiny house and all of your new classmates are teasing you because you're the poorest in town now. My mom had to take two jobs to make ends meet. In the morning, she worked at a nursing home and at night, she worked at a diner. Dinner was usually leftovers from the diner because she didn't make much. We could only afford unhealthy foods. I ate fast food almost every day and I think I became addicted. And sometimes I simply ate when I felt sad or stressed. By the time I was 15, I weighed almost 200 pounds. I didn't care though, because I knew I was awesome regardless of my weight. But one day my mom walked into the living room while I was sitting on the couch eating my second bag of Doritos and she <gasps> gasped. This is getting out of hand, Tammy. What, mom? You're massive. I'm signing you up for fat camp right now. I'm not fat. I'm fabulous. She rolled her eyes and walked away. But two days later, she told me that she had signed me up for some virtual fat camp. I'd have to exercise two hours a day, and she'd watch me to make sure I did it. I wanted to cry because there's nothing I hate more than exercise. During the first class, I fell flat on the living room floor after my first push-up. Get up! No, Mom! I don't want to do this! The same thing happened the next day, so my mom decided she'd have to try a new strategy. You're not getting anything to eat unless you complete your full two hours of exercise. What? You can go to prison for that, Mom. Oh, yeah? Well, report me then. And what do you think will happen to you? I sighed. I guess she'd won. And this is where it got crazy. After about 10 minutes of exercise, I began to sweat. It was a really gross sensation because I simply wasn't used to that. I rarely ever sweated because I avoided any kind of physical activity. Then, as I continued working out, the drops of sweat fell onto the floor, but instead of dissolving into the carpet, they hardened. Before I knew it, there were many drops of hardened sweat on the floor. Mom, is that supposed to happen? What? Look! I showed her the drops of sweat and picked one up. No. That is definitely odd. But look at it. It sparkles like a diamond. I'll get this tested tomorrow. Keep moving. You've only done one hour. I continued exercising, and when I was done, she collected all the sweat particles and went to her second job. After school the next day, she seemed more excited than usual. Tammy, they're real diamonds. That makes no sense, Mom. How can a person sweat diamonds? I don't know. I already sold the ones you dropped yesterday. If we keep this up for another week, 
We can move out of this stupid town and start a new life somewhere else. I felt like I was dreaming, but how ridiculous is life sometimes? The only thing I hated doing was our key out of this horrible small town. The next day, my mom quit her two jobs and pulled me out of school. When I got home, there was a new treadmill and stationary bike in the living room. This is school now. You'll have to exercise all day. Mom, no! Okay, fine. I let you take breaks sometimes. For about three weeks, I did nothing but eat, sleep, and exercise. And I continued to sweat diamonds each time. It was surreal, but our life was about to change. Big time. After a month, my mom sold our tiny house and we flew to New Hampshire. After a few days of searching for the perfect house, we found one which overlooked the ocean. It was even better than the house we shared with Roger. At this point, my mom gave me a break for a while. We picked my new school, a posh private school for rich kids, and we got to know our neighborhood a bit. On my first day of school, my mom woke me up at four in the morning. Mom, what? Why do I need to be up so early? My school is like 10 minutes away. I've got something exciting to show you. She took me to a room downstairs, which was apparently our new in-house gym. It had every single piece of gym equipment imaginable, and they were all for me. Great, huh? You're going to exercise two hours every morning and two hours every night. That way, we'll be able to maintain our lifestyle and we can ensure our future generations are rich too. Don't you want that for us? I don't even want kids, Mom. Can't you just allow me to be a regular teen? We have enough money saved up by now. No, we don't. I've spent it all already. Stop talking and get to work. I hated this. But do you know what? Remember how I told you I was a really chubby kid because I ate everything in sight? All this exercise had transformed me into a total hottie. So a few years later, after I started high school, I was a total boy magnet. I belonged to a clique of girls who were quite popular too. So apart from the excessive exercise, I was happy. Eventually, I met the guy of my dreams. His name was Xander, and he was just perfect in every way. His eyes always glistened whenever they spoke to me. He had the smoothest skin and the most perfect smile in the world. And don't get me started on his hair. But we couldn't hang out as much as I wanted us to because of my exercise schedule. I tried to be honest with him, but I omitted the diamonds part. But I guess the truth always comes out when you're serious about a person. It was during a heated argument. Can't you just make time for me? Just one whole Saturday? We only ever hang out a few minutes a day. I told you, I have to work out. You work out too much. You already look perfect. A little break won't kill you. I feel like you're hiding something from me. Xander. What? You're hiding something, aren't you? Is there another guy? No. Xander. I sweat diamonds, and my mom forces me to work out. My three-year-old brother could have come up with a better excuse. I'm serious. Look, run around the block with me. What? Follow me. I started running and he followed me, looking confused as hell. After a few minutes, I was sweating profusely. The drops fell onto the road and he saw it for himself. I bent down to pick up a diamond. What the? Let's go to a jeweler to get it evaluated. You'll see I'm not lying. Long story short, Xander realized that I wasn't lying. He took a while to recover from this crazy news, then he took me on a fancy date to apologize. After dessert, he looked deep into my eyes and said, Why don't we run away together? What? This is our last year of high school. Instead of going to college, we can just run off together. But how will we survive? Uh, hello? He said while showing me the diamond he had kept in his pocket. I know you don't enjoy what your mom is putting you through, and I don't think you're happy. She's just using you. I know, but... If you work out in secret, I could sell some of the diamonds and we could save enough to live a comfortable life away from your mom. I know you hate working out, but you'd only need to do it for a little while. Then we'd buy a house and start our own business, maybe in Asia or even the Caribbean. You think you'd like to spend the rest of your life with me? Of course, I will marry you someday. Well, if that's what you want. I smiled. Yes, I'd like that very much. From that evening, I started working out secretly at Xander's house. He sold the diamonds and we opened a secret account in my name. When we had about two million dollars saved, I wrote my mom a note, packed a small suitcase and drove off into the night with Xander. 
We've been traveling the world for now, but we pretend that we're poor backpackers. So far, we've been to Cambodia, India, Nigeria, St. Lucia, Greece, Paris, Australia, South Korea, and Thailand. We're trying to figure out our business ideas and we're hoping that our travels will inspire us somehow. I still deposit money into my mother's bank account once in a while because I'm not a monster and I don't want her to starve. She hasn't bothered to contact me and I appreciate that. She probably has a lot of regrets. Anyway, now I only work out once or twice a week and I love my life. Mom, Dad, I have some good news for you. My sister Ella came rushing into the living room. I braced myself for whatever brilliant idea she came up with this time. Our parents looked up immediately, all their attention on her. I've been saving a lot from the jobs I've been doing over the weekends. I now want to start my own online business selling jewelry. You guys have inspired me since your store is so successful. She opened up her laptop and showed us her new website. See, it's all ready. Now all I need is to add the items I'll be selling. My parents exchanged a look I saw often. It was a look of pride and joy at their brilliant daughter. Then dad turned to me. Aren't you going to congratulate your sister? Whatever. I rolled my eyes. Take that attitude and go to your room. I got up to leave, but Ella blocked my path. It's okay, Dad. Don't be too hard on Kat. She'll catch up one day. In fact, she managed to get a C in her latest math test. That's so much better than a D she got in the previous test. Isn't that great? She slowly clapped in my face and laughed. It was humiliating. I lunged at her, tackled her to the floor, and started to pull her hair. Kat, you're hurting me! Mom grabbed me and pulled me off Ella. Get away from her, you crazy child! I stood up and ran to my room. I shouldn't have let her get to me. Now my parents had another reason to hate me. Yep, it was just another normal Saturday evening in my house. Our parents were constantly comparing me to Ella, who, according to mom, was her perfect and most talented daughter. If only mom knew how wrong she was. You see, my big sister had perfected the art of fooling our parents into thinking she was an angel. She flourished in her studies and also helped our parents at their jewelry store. It also didn't hurt that she was strikingly beautiful and a social butterfly. Everyone wanted her in their circle, and all the boys wanted to go out with her. Truth was, Ella was evil, manipulative, and very cunning, and I was the only one who saw right through her mask. Watch till the end to see how Ella's lies caught up with her, and the truth about who she really was came out. Also like this video and subscribe to this channel to watch more cool videos like this one. By the end of that month, Ella's online business was up and running. I always saw her deliver wrapped items to some of her friends at school. One evening, our dinner conversation took a very interesting turn. So, Ella, how's business? It's going great, Dad. I'm sorry I haven't had much time to help out at the store. I've been busy making deliveries. Don't worry about it, honey. Speaking of the store, something happened there last night. If I wasn't mistaken, I saw Ella tense. A few things are missing from the storage room. I think we got robbed. What? That's horrible. Yeah, the police are investigating. Don't you have cameras at the store? We do, but the thieves were both wearing masks. So you don't have any suspects? Not yet, but the police are questioning Thomas, the security guard. Ella, who seemed bored with the whole conversation, suddenly choked on her food and began to cough repeatedly. <laughs> are you all right, honey? I... I can't. She stood and ran out of the room. What was that all about? I have no idea, but I was going to find out. I kept a close eye on Ella and nothing interesting happened at first, but one night, I heard her open her bedroom window. I rushed to my window and I saw her jump and fall on some bushes below. This was it! I was finally going to find out what she was up to. I quickly put on a jacket and jumped out my window, just like Ella. We'd both done it so many times and never once got hurt or caught. Ella ran down the street and I ran after her, trying my best not to be seen. A few minutes later, I saw a car's headlights flash twice and Ella rushing towards it. The car door opened and a man got out. I knew that man. Thomas, hey, where is it? I could lose my job and go to jail over this. Calm down, they don't suspect anything. Now hand me the package. I need to get back before my annoying sister finds out I'm gone. All right, all right. But this is the last time I'm helping you steal from your parents. I could not believe what I was hearing. As if you could turn down the money I'm paying you. Now leave. As Thomas got back in his car, I ran up the street and climbed through my window. I barely slept that night. I was bursting with excitement. I was going to share my findings with mom and dad first thing in the morning. 
Breakfast was going to be very entertaining for me and shocking for Ella. However, the next morning, I woke up to find both mom and dad gone and Ella eating breakfast by herself. Hey, where's mom and dad? They already left for the store. But they always have breakfast with us. They had to go earlier than usual. Did you have something you wanted to tell them? Um, uh, not really. Excuse me. I picked up my bag and went to school. I thought about going to the store instead of school, but mom and dad would be so mad at me for skipping school. I decided to wait until dinner. Immediately after school, I ran home. It was finally time to expose Ella. As soon as I walked through the door, I started talking. Mom, dad, you'll not believe what Ella- Cat, explain to us what these pieces of jewelry were doing in your room. I stared in shock. On the table in front of our parents and Ella were several jewelry boxes. What are you talking about? Ella found them in your room and she showed us right away. Did you steal this from the store? What? I didn't steal anything. Ella must have put them there. Enough. Your sister is a good girl. If it wasn't for her, we wouldn't know what you've been doing. I found the boxes under your bed, cat. Did a ghost walk in and hide them there? Stop lying. I furiously wiped tears from my eyes and ran to my room. This is not over. You're in so much trouble, young lady. Ella must have planted those boxes in my room. How was I going to convince mom and dad that she was setting me up? The next morning, mom informed me that they decided not to report me to the police. She proceeded to issue me with a stern warning to not steal from the store again. She also grounded me for a month. Once again, I tried to tell her the truth about Ella, but she didn't let me talk. The more I tried to explain, the angrier she got, so I just stopped. Meanwhile, Ella walked around and laughed with her friends as if nothing had happened while I was miserable and angry. I needed to do something. I opened my locker and dumped my books inside. Ugh, I hated school. Only thing I loved about it were my fabulous friends who adored me. And how could they not? I sold them fancy jewelry at half the price my parents were selling them at the store. I was about to close my locker when something caught my eye. It was a note taped to the inside of the locker door. I know you're the thief, I want you to steal the diamond and gold necklace from the store display window. I'll pick it up from your locker tomorrow after school. Do what I ask or I'll report you. I stared at the piece of paper in shock. Could someone have seen me take stuff from the store? The diamond and gold necklace was the most expensive item in the store. My parents would never forgive me if I got caught stealing it. But what choice did I have? Whoever left the note was going to expose me. After school, I went to see Thomas, the store security guard, and also my accomplice. Thomas had worked at the store for years, and my parents trusted him. Ella, what are you doing here during the day? Someone could see you. I'm in trouble. I told him about the note and the demand the anonymous sender had made. Have you lost your mind? There's no way I'm helping you steal a thousand dollar necklace. You don't have a choice here. If I go down, so do you. But we could go to jail. Not if we steal the necklace and hand it over to whoever wrote the note. We have to do it tonight. It took a little more convincing, but Thomas finally agreed with me. I went home and waited for everyone to sleep. Then I snuck out. As usual, I had my parents' keys to the store with me. Thomas was already at the storefront. We put on our masks and opened the door. We grabbed the necklace and were out in minutes. We ran all the way to Thomas's apartment, which was only a few blocks away. Now what? Now I show the video to mom and dad. I couldn't believe Ella had fallen for my trap. When I wrote her the note, I thought she'd suspect it was from me, but she didn't. And now here she was, the necklace in her hand and a stunned look on her face. Cat, what are you doing? I followed you. I recorded everything. Mom and dad will be so mad at you. Give me that phone. Thomas lunged at me, but I jumped out of the way. He fell down and while he scrambled to get up, I ran out the door. When I got to our front door, I realized I didn't have my keys since I'd snuck out through the window. I rang the doorbell over and over. Mom! Dad! I could barely breathe from all the running. A few minutes later, the door opened. Cat, what are you doing outside at this hour? I have to show you something. Dad, I can explain. I turned to see Ella standing behind me, arms crossed and her head bent in defeat. Girls, what's going on? As soon as we were all inside the house, I showed everyone the video I'd recorded. When mom saw Ella and Thomas take off their masks, she exclaimed in shock. Oh my God, Ella, you're the one who's been robbing us? I'm so sorry, I, I never thought you'd find out. Panic was written all over Ella's face. Where's the necklace? 
She took it out of her pocket and placed it on the table. Then she ran up the stairs and locked herself in her room. Mom dropped to her knees and started to cry. How could she do this? She's so perfect! Ella was never perfect, Mom. She just wanted you to think she was and you all fell for it. Police officers showed up at our house the next morning. When Ella saw them, she grabbed Mom's arm. You called the cops on me? We didn't, but after Thomas was arrested last night, he told the police about you. But I don't want to go to jail. Tears rolled down her face. I kind of felt sorry for her, but what did she expect? Ella, I'm sorry. Don't talk to me. I hate you. She was escorted out to a waiting police car. Dad went with her. What will happen to her? Your dad and I have agreed not to make any charges, but she needs to go make a statement. What? Kat, I know you have your differences, but do you really want to see Ella go to jail? I thought about it for a moment. I hated to admit it, but Mom was right. Okay, maybe not jail, but you can't just let her get away with it. Of course not. We are sending her to live and work at Grandma Patty's farm. I burst out laughing. Ella hated that farm. Not only was the farm hundreds of miles away, it was in a remote area that had no cell phone network. Also, Grandma Patty had no TV. Everyone there spent their days shoveling horse manure and cleaning chicken houses. For how long? For the next two years. She will only live the farm when she goes to college. I walked to my room, happy that Ella's true nature had finally been exposed.